Hey there, commanders. Meet the Sawtooth, a non-engineered, non-tech broker, no reputation required, entry-level AX ship built from a Diamondback Explorer. I call this a zero-grind build, something any player can throw together quickly using only their credit balance. It's an ideal starting point for new players who want to try out AX combat on the cheap to see if they like it, without needing to sacrifice engineering materials for the experience. The Diamondback Explorer isn't widely known as a combat-focused ship. Most buy one for exploration, where the ship has excelled from the very beginning of its career. However, the DBX has a capacity for thick armor and strong weapons that make it a compelling threat. It's the only small ship to carry one large and two medium hardpoints. This is important because, at the time of writing, the only AX weapons available in the size 1 hardpoint are Guardian variants. There are no size 1 human AX weapons on the market, which means that most small ships can't carry full AX loadouts without using Guardian technology. This means the Diamondback Explorer has quietly found itself in a unique position. It's cheap, readily available, makes a great hull tank, has excellent jump characteristics, and all its hardpoints are mounted along the center line. It's a good starting point for a combat ship, and even without engineering, can cover large distances quickly. The DBX does come with some important trade-offs to consider. Without engineering, the Diamondback is pretty slow. Though it does accelerate quickly, you won't be outrunning any Thargoid interceptors. The cockpit canopy is massive, meaning that it's pretty easy for a few well-placed shots to vent it. Maneuvering thrusters are somewhat lackadaisical compared to the mains, so it's a ship that very much prefers to be led by the nose, rather than side-strafing. Military-grade composites are the first choice for all AX combat, providing the same hull enhancement as other, more expensive hull armor options, but at a lower price point. Finding this armor can be difficult for new players, so be sure to leverage Inara in order to save time. Power plants are a point of flexibility here, with both A-rated and B-rated being viable choices for this build. An A-rated power plant is the most efficient, and makes the most power. B-rated plants are much cheaper, make a little bit less power, are slightly less efficient, but are more durable, making them more resilient to all forms of module damage. I prefer A-rated on this build because it leaves the door open for more upgrades later. Even though this build does not call for engineering, it is not difficult to add engineering later on should you decide this build is a keeper. The DBX feels its thruster package more than one would expect, so A-rated thrusters are best, though B-rated are adequate if you find yourself on a tight budget. Should you decide to come back later and engineer them, an A-rated thruster will elevate the DBX to the high 400 meters per second boost range with grade 5 dirty drive tuning and drag drives experimental. The DBX is a prolific jumper. Without any engineering, this ship gets most of 30 light years per jump using the 5A frameshift drive. I highly recommend using an A-rated drive for this ship if you are a new player. Acquire it early in the process if possible, since it will make collecting everything else go much faster. Life support can utilize A, B, or D-rated modules but I recommend A-rated life support for the Diamondback because its large canopy is more vulnerable to direct fire and can be destroyed quickly. 25 minutes is plenty of time to find a friendly port, even offering some loiter time after canopy failure to finish close fights. Because human AX weapons don't draw a lot of power, there is a lot more flexibility in capacitor selection. A-rated capacitors are still the best choice here, but if your budget is tight, a B-rated capacitor still has enough grunt for heavy lifting. Just be sure to upgrade it for an A-rated unit later on if you plan to engineer this ship or add Guardian weapons. I use an A-rated sensor package for this build. Plenty of AXI rigs run D-rated sensors to save weight and power for speed and attack damage. This is not a compromise I like to make, and since we have the power headroom, an A-rated sensor package is my recommendation as it can help make up for our slower base speeds with longer sight lines. The fuel tank does not need to be modified or downsized. For fighting Thargoids, there are two general directions ships can lean. 
One is to adopt heavy shielding and deal more damage than you absorb. The other, known as cold orbiting, involves masking heat signatures as much as possible to avoid damage between well-timed, high-speed attack runs. Without engineering, it's difficult to build up enough shielding for an effective damage tank. So we're going to lean towards a shieldless cold orbit build. Cold orbiting builds greatly simplify the optional internals layout. We'll be using D-rated hull reinforcement packages all the way down, except for the size 1 internals, which will be module reinforcement packages. Standard hull reinforcement packages are actually the recommended choice for AX combat by the AXI, since engineering amps them into something even better than the Guardian-based hull reinforcements can be. So we already have a strong foundation for the future. Even if you plan on trading up to a different ship, engineering hull reinforcement packages is still a good idea, since they can easily be moved to a new ship when needed. Weapon selection here is simple, with only two human AX weapon types to pick from, multi-cannons and missile racks. There are dedicated videos about each of these weapons, which you can review later on, but I'll go over a few essentials about them here for convenience. Enhanced AX multi-cannons are available in turreted, gimbaled, and fixed mounts. AX multi-cannons are the most flexible, forgiving, and easy to use, with the fastest moving projectiles in the entire game. They draw very little power, impart minimal heat, and maintain high accuracy at longer distances than even an engineered long-range multi-cannon is capable of. Since the Diamondback is small and maneuverable, a turret isn't really necessary for any application this ship cares about. Gimbals offer much better fire control and do more damage than turrets. I recommend installing a size 3 gimbaled multi-cannon under the nose of the Diamondback. Fixed weapons are possible, but the damage increase gained is minimal compared to the gimbal. Newer players will find a gimbal greatly increases applied damage compared to fixed weapons, and will make them more effective pilots against scouts and interceptors. For the size 2 hardpoints, we have two options. Two additional gimbaled multi-cannons, or two fixed AX missile racks. In the test footage you see here, I'm using full multi-cannons. This configuration makes the Diamondback more effective against scouts at the cost of exertion damage capability against interceptors. Exposed interceptor hearts wither quickly with this configuration though you will need to pour on the bullets in earnest to get a heart out, or rely on the assistance of other ships. Adding two missile racks grants 128 rounds of hard-hitting exertion damage, at the cost of needing more time to kill hearts and scouts. Even with enhancements, the missile rack lacks the shot speed to effectively deal with maneuvering scout ships, so fitting missiles means being careful about large swarms of scout ships. I've opted for a full multi-cannon loadout for this build, and recommend it for new players, since it's much easier to use. Any ship intended to fight Thargoids needs to have a shutdown field neutralizer. Thargoid combat zones are rich with potential threats, and will experience multiple shutdown pulses over an encounter. Getting caught in one unprepared gives hostile ships free damage that can turn an engagement sour very quickly. Since we are using gimbaled multi-cannons for this build, an enhanced Xenoscanner is critical, as it enables accurate sub-targeting of Thargoid interceptor hearts. Without it, your only option is manual aiming, which is not an effective strategy for this weapon. The remaining two utility slots hold two heatsink launchers, which will be responsible for dumping the heat required to hide from Thargoids and discourage aggression when retreating from hostile interceptors. The Sawtooth can handle itself well against threats you would not normally consider, this build, with some assistance from local NPC pilots, can kill a Cyclops Interceptor. It takes patience, a realistic understanding of your abilities, good timing, and situational awareness. But the Diamondback Explorer can complete the first two stages of a port defense operation over the course of an hour. Most of this contribution was screening scouts for the larger NPC ships, preventing them from getting distracted or destroyed while attacking the Interceptors. The most effective strategy I found was to keep an eye on the interceptor fights taking place around the port, wait for the NPCs to exert a heart, and then rotate in to kill that heart before rotating out to focus on the scouts again. 
I did have to alter this plan when a Cyclops interceptor decided to focus me down. But even in these situations, the Diamondback remained resilient. Hull integrity tended to decline slowly, leaving plenty of room for a lot of quick stops at the station. Wiping out two or three hearts between repair stops is attainable with NPC assistance, though pushing it any farther was a stretch. Against scouts, the Sawtooth rips hard, easily felling large swarms without losing very much hull integrity. This build is able to defend a landing zone on its own when needed. The Sawtooth is a challenging ship to fly, but there was something about the experience I enjoyed. In terms of value per credit, this ship is not a bad deal. It costs less than 20 million to build, and for this cost, the ship can return about 50 million per hour, providing 30 million in total profit for the effort. While not the greatest AX ship compared to other, more expensive offerings, the Sawtooth is definitely worth a new player's attention. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.